So there's part of us that wants us to express the highest and best within us. And there's another part of us that's really concerned with making it in the world. Sometimes those two can overlap and sometimes they don't. But let's refer to this part of us that wants us to discover and to express the best within us. Let's call that part of us our inner guide. It's this inner guide that's trying to encourage us to live the most noble life we can, to develop and express the finest qualities that we can in life. That inner guide may not be in conflict with us getting into a romantic relationship. That can be a very good way for us to develop the highest and best within us. But that doesn't necessarily mean it will be an easy relationship. To some extent we'll get happiness and fulfillment, but to a certain extent we'll be challenged. As we get challenged, we discover different things about ourselves. We discover ways in which we haven't really grown up and we need to become a more mature and balanced person. There are some ways in which being challenged in a relationship can be really good for us, as long as it doesn't go too far. Of course, it reaches a point where a relationship can be abusive, which is another story. We may have all sorts of ideas around life, assumptions about money, assumptions about members of the opposite sex and how they see things. And we find that our perspective on reality is not the only one. Who has the right of it and who doesn't can take a bit of working out to discover. And even if the relationship eventually ends... We could have learned a lot from each other and grown up as people. It may not end well in terms of a marriage, but it can still have been very beneficial in its own way as part of our growth as individuals. The process of growing up and having our, some of our illusions stripped away and our assumptions about life stripped away can be painful, but obviously it's good in the longer term that we experience that. In a sense, the very purpose of our inner guide is to help us to wake up which means dropping our illusions, which means we need to see that we have illusions. We have ways we distort reality. And this is all part of our process of trying to get us to reach the ultimate truth, which is to reach this enlightened love state and the sense of freedom and empowerment and release that that brings. The Arana Guide is trying to lead us there, but it's not always an easy road because of the, the illusions we cling to. And as I mentioned earlier, we're actually actively trying to create and support those illusions while our inner guide is trying to free us from illusions. We think a particular thing is going to make us happy when our inner guide knows, well, not really, but it might help us let go of some illusions so we actually can get closer to what will really make us happy. When a relationship breaks up, it can be tempted to go into ugly illusions. So we go from having the pretty illusions And then we start manufacturing ugly illusions. So first we have all these pretty illusions about how wonderful this person is. And then we flip, go to the flip side. We start having ugly illusions of how horrible they are. And so first we're making up stories to support how wonderful they are. And then we start making up stories to support how horrible they are. Now that's really true about that person. They were never an angel, but nor are they now a demon. They're not either of those. We go from adoring them to demonizing them. But neither perspective is real. Both are illusionary. Both are distortions of reality. And none of them really serve us in the long term. A relationship with romantic love depends a lot on our relationship with ourselves and with life. Because that's the context in which we live. If we follow the inner directions of our inner guide, our inner direction that's trying to help us express the highest and best within us, will tend to become increasingly happy and fulfilled. It won't necessarily be an easy road. It might be rough along the way, but it will lead to a deeper and better sense of happiness. If we deny or avoid our inner guide, we may find ourselves living a hollow life, outward success, but inwardly empty and possibly anxious and depressed because we feel there's something fundamentally wrong with our life. And there is something wrong with our life if we've lost our connection with our inner guide. We won't feel supported in life because we've refused the support life has to offer, which is in the form of our connection with our inner guide. Can we be happy and not follow the promptings of the highest and best within us? Not really, can we? Not in the long term. Eventually we're going to get caught out 
if we deny that inner voice, that inner conscience, that inner guide. So happiness is a state of being. We can be happy. We don't do happy, as I mentioned. So if our state of being is clouded by illusions, something's just not going to feel right, at least not for long. And there'll still be that inner pressure of this highest and best within us trying to guide us towards our greater happiness and deepest fulfillment. We at the same time can be clinging desperately to illusions that we believe were going to make us happy. But they're not going to make us happy because only really listening to our guide is going to make us happy and following the direction that wants to take us in. And we've invested our idea of happiness in something else and given a lot of time and energy to it, now having to face the fact that it didn't quite work the way we wanted it to. Sometimes we can look upon the promptings from an inner guide as something trying to spoil our fun. We treat it as something that's trying to stop us doing what we want to do. When often it's more like a parent who's trying to stop a child playing with fire. It's trying to stop us doing things that will ultimately hurt us and trying to get us to go in a direction that will actually ultimately be more fulfilling and more nourishing for us. Obviously, from one perspective, we're living in a material world. We need to be able to function in this world. However, if we get too caught up in the glitz and glamour of the material world, it can get us into patterns of behaviour and activity that don't really support us living out from our highest potential. And the more we get caught up in living in the material world and not listening to our inner guide, then to that extent we're living more and more in a world of illusion as we are caught up in things that don't really serve our development. We're not following our inner guide towards a higher state of being and a higher state of awareness. Our inner guide is trying to get us to move towards that which is for our highest good. Yet we get so caught up in playing with our toys in the world that sometimes we don't listen to that inner guide, we don't listen to that inner voice. And this can get us trapped in illusionary situations. On the one hand, we need to be able to navigate our way through the material world and have some form of existence which works for us. At the same time, we can't be really happy unless we have our own approval. And having our own approval means having the approval of the highest and best within us. We can get away with chasing money and success up to a point. As long as that aligns with where our inner guide wants it to be going, then it will work. But if we go further than that, then dissatisfaction will start to creep in and become stronger and stronger. That's when we start to really go off balance. And the signs of that going off balance can be stress, anxiety, depression, those sorts of things. As I was saying earlier, nobody can be happy if they don't have their own inner approval. And if we're chasing empty victories in the world that don't really matter to our own inner values, then we're not going to be happy. The way we live our lives needs to align to our own inner values in order to find happiness and fulfillment.